So this is middle of January in Vancouver area. It's kind of weird weekend. That's why I'm wearing t-shirt. But I'm out here actually to review this Devo 8K diesel heater and also clean up my car and all that stuff. So let's get to it. It's been about two months since I camped out. I've been kind of dealing with synthesizers, learning some piano lessons, whatever, just work and stuff. But I really wanted to. I haven't had campfire in two months pretty much. And I've accumulated, usually for campfires, I, I have all my shipping Amazon boxes and stuff I save. My new diesel heater, and it's quite away from car. So the wire is super long for power. It's running into my front door. That's where Blue Yeti 55 is. Uh, EB55. Yeah, took a while to start. Instructions are in completely weird language uh, written in like semi-English whatever. But I decided to actually connect remote and it does work. I had to manually start the pump by pressing the two directional buttons. So it took like two minutes to kind of get the fuel going and then eventually just like power on. And eventually, eventually it started pumping, eventually. But uh, actually first time I plugged and I guess I didn't, I didn't know I had like, it didn't pump itself. There was some kind of warning signal uh, happening. That's where I disconnected stuff. And yeah, I guess that's because eventually it just told me after a while that, hey, uh, the fuel isn't going. So I had to manually pump it, but I was doing it here hidden away remotely <laughs> like in case shit happens <laughs> i'm away from this thing uh but it's it's going now um yeah i guess well but it's open space right now but uh there's def different settings so i'll just put it on like level three or something let's do that actually it's kind of nice you can do it remotely oh Let's, so this 150 Celsius is actually internal temperature inside of a case apparently right now. Uh, it's set to level four actually. Interesting. Come on. Come on. Oh, okay. Yeah, 12 volt pump and yay, I know. So this 10 Celsius temperature is actually on that screen that's what it's measuring so that's temperature outside which for me january is pretty warm it's amazing after this uh, storm that we had the arctic storm and minus 10 in vancouver or something ridiculous now it's plus 10 and yeah i'm just whatever just jeans sitting it's uh, it's nice and comfy it's fine but uh, let's crank it up to uh let's do f level five even i'm really digging the remote here for sure if it gets uh super hot once i close down i can always go to level one the idea is to just uh, jam it here in the window right so uh i guess jam it in the upper section cold air can come out here i can always open the upper window for ventilation but it's uh, it's not toxic it's, it's just like normal air coming in but that was a plan for the night just jam it here and uh, if I'm uh, when I'm not solo whatever it's just gonna be uh, going into tent yeah so pump is working for now it's an open rain I just covered the air intake by like a log there jammed with some rocks so just to make sure it's not gonna fall down or whatever yeah uh, I'll get the box eventually, whatever. This is first attempt, first try, right? In, in, it's not cool for it to be exposed like this, but I think after one night, uh, should be okay. Uh, the problem is this exhaust here gets super hot apparently. Oh yeah, I can see like the rain is totally burning off right, right away, vaporizes. So whatever cover I do here is just gotta be like, away from this pump thing so the question of course what did i use for heat before many people know i told it on the channel i just used this butane stove i crank it up just a little bit just so it simmers and that uh, that was it but i never ran it for the full night just while chilling here and overnight i got this uh, minus 15 sleeping bag it's just like in the morning when i would wake up i would uh, crank it up a little bit or much 
uh, just uh, for like 15 minutes or so and actually I do have a, a monoxide monitor I'll just place it like here and I'll do it just in case anyways uh, yeah whoa Oh, okay, it's reset now. Yeah, and that's what I would do for kid. But now, yeah, pipe, pipe is in. It's definitely cranking hot air. Too bad it's cranking it, the hot air, right next to the fridge here. So what I think I'll do next time is uh, use this window on the other side, actually. Welcome to my cozy house. So heat is pumping, it's great. I got my exercises here I gotta do. I got new, uh, I didn't bring my bigger keyboards with me this time, and I got this new uh, tiny substitution for my uh, Akai MPK3 model with this Arturia Mini Lab because for portable version and also to use it as a second MIDI controller at home for music, I wanted 16 extra knobs for manipulating synths besides my bigger keyboard knobs. And also for mobile, like right now, just quick little getaway, whatever, I didn't want to bring big stuff. I wanted an actual modulation strip. The Akai MPK, it's like this little controller and the way you hit it, it can do both uh, like uh, pitch and modulation at the same time. I wanted something actually proper because uh, this is important for synth, uh, well, you know, mod wheel manipulation, orchestral tools and stuff like that. And it doesn't take much space, like all of this setup, this, this, this keyboard, the new mouse I got for DAW manipulation. So I have 19 or 12 buttons here for different functions and things. And also this uh, new keyboard here as well. Uh, I can program these buttons here and those buttons to be some kind of macros. But for now, let's do exercises. I'm actually not used to smaller keys now. I, I haven't used mini. MIDI controller in a while because MPK sucked I really didn't want to use it and also the key feeling like this is almost the same price but much much better, bigger, better make in general after some of these exercises I do have offline YouTube pre-downloaded uh, like if I go oh yeah downloads uh, I can watch all this uh, YouTube videos here because it's, it's all offline pre-downloaded that's why I have YouTube Premium. I love this function just for here on the tablet as well. So lately I've been getting more into different kinds of synths, just playing around and definitely having knobs to manipulate stuff is so useful. Could never have enough knobs. I have like eight faders, eight controllers on bigger keyboard, but I kind of use them all up and I want for different functions extra eight. What I'm gonna do, because bigger keyboard here, in general at home what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reutilize this RAM mount and uh, something else I have it uh, in the, my windshield in the car I'm gonna get slightly different holder and this keyboard I'm gonna attach to this table with RAM mount and it's gonna be kind of like laptop, laptop uh, over here at home this uh, bigger keyboard here and this thing on the side kind of like hanging here on the side so I can with reach of my hand I can just like quickly tweak uh, these knobs here. That's gonna be the setup. Let's do some exercise here. Even though I've done this lesson before the other day, I totally suck and I'm not used to the small keys right now. I need to adjust my hand. Uh, I'm gonna do this exercise again. Practice makes perfect. I'm gonna move on to other ones. And then video tutorials. Probably gonna sit here till, uh, yeah, like 2 a.m. Oh yeah, what a beautiful view. Just watching Sheldon here. So, a bit of a mess. I got lots of cleaning up to do. Two months the car wasn't used for any camping or anything like that. So, and I didn't check what was inside here going on. And what happened is some stuff spilled the creamer. Then also this side is leaking somewhere here in the canopy. Like it's over there. I just touched inside there. It's a basic, basically the sandwich is between the truck bed and my metal frame. Somewhere here, there is a leakage, right? Because canopy shifted over time a little bit, 
uh, and uh, I guess the sealant uh, ripped, not ripped, but you know, thinned out somewhere. So this whole area is for sure dry where the canopy sandwich is, uh, so that's fine. Apparently a bunch of pots that were in here, see all my pots, I guess there is so much condensation here from humidity, just place not being used, that uh, there were uh, there was water accumulation like quite a bit inside the pot like this much and it obviously wasn't leaking from anywhere outside or pipes or anything like that so it's just from accumulating conden con condensation and uh, there is definitely some uh, mold to clean here again I haven't used the place for two months because when I use it even even though I was using butane heater um, like every camping water, I run temperatures here till uh, usually 20 Celsius. So uh, generally the place when I camp dries up still, right? Kills all the humidity, all that stuff. So I'm gonna actually unpack a couple of drawers. I'm gonna do thorough cleaning of all this mess, all the molds, things like that. Oh yeah. That's what I wanted to see wake up to. I've been missing that for two months. It's, uh, it's nice outside. It's probably 10 Celsius, which is nice. And so what I'm doing here, um, I'm going to remove the pipe. So essentially, the leak is happening somewhere here. And all this material also somehow gets uh, super wet and it starts from the middle there somewhere. So what I'm doing with my uh, new diesel, uh, Vivo 8K diesel heater is basically on maximum setting, drying out all of this stuff. Just all this area, I'm gonna spend hours and hours just drying thoroughly. And then I'm gonna use uh, the silicone um, couple of tubes to seal it off. I did it uh, on this side, like I did it on both sides, but I guess I didn't do it enough. And again, things shifted over time. But this side has been always dry in the sandwich area, right where things connect. Definitely something going on here. And generally, yeah, I'm just gonna clean things up and gonna throughout the day do the music thing and. Uh, just dry places and uh, seal things off. Landscape changed here again a little bit, or quite a bit actually. This is a favorite place of mine to come, and uh, the other beach that I do like to go to. There is so much water because it's been raining for weeks now. I went in. I went in yesterday and I saw the first puddle being big and it's like okay the consequent two big puddles to get there are probably up to you know my hood over here so I'm like nope so definitely this uh, little beach here getting eroded uh, I guess come summertime there's gonna be some ditches here to get to a little bit further down there I got new additions here, Blue Yeti solar panels, but I will not go into details. This is first time using them. Yeah, so there's gonna be some video coming up about that stuff, how efficient and so on, versus like the roof solar panels that I've had for like four years and stuff like that. It actually says 22 Celsius outside, but that's lying because uh, um, it's uh, right. It's connected to the hot surface here, so I've heard in some other videos that I definitely don't trust that sensor here because it's absorbing some heat from the from the inside. Okay, so it seems like it went through overnight about half of my diesel. It's not that efficient as I thought it would be. Okay, this air pipe here insulated is definitely hot to the touch. Like, that's it, I can't, like it's set in six. I can't hold it for too long, it's too hot. Ooh, this is hot too. Uh, but uh, because the distance here is so long, right? 
uh, some heat always you lose by the time it gets there. Or actually I haven't tried setting 6 yet, so maybe it's pumping super hot air inside there. I gotta check it out. So this Weber 8K diesel heater, Chinese model, it's about 200 bucks, got it on Amazon. Um, seems to be working fine. It survived the rain. Uh, definitely I need cover for next time. But let's see how it's being powered right now. Yeah, so that's what I got going on here. Blue Yeti EB55. It's uh, 537 watt hours. And this thing draws uh, 30 to 40 uh, watts each hour. So generally I checked it out from last night. It was sitting at 40%. And right now, solar is coming in at 140 watts, which is pretty good considering the sun here is not, well, it's winter, January. Sun is obstructed a little bit by clouds. When clouds were fully in just now, um, it was coming to be about 100 watts, which is not bad. I'm not sure how much my roof solar panels are pumping, also 200 watts. These are 200 watts as well. So there's gonna be some comparison video, like some other time in spring when it gets warmer, I will get out and, uh, or not spring or maybe February, get out, shoot video about this setup and so on, test things out and compare. I totally lucked out, such a beautiful day, fully sunny, amazing, it's probably 8th um, of a tank left, in general this is uh, 5 liters, and the reason I know that is because this is 5 liter jack, that one and a quarter gallon, or I guess one gallon roughly, something like that. So there's a little bit here left, just a tiny bit. So it's just, uh, and I, I pretty much topped it off till the max. So I ran it for about 13 hours so far, since uh, about 1 a.m. and now it's 2 a.m., that uh, p.m. Generally it's been running uh, at uh, 4 setting of heat and now for about 2 hours, no, for about Three, four hours I've been running it at six because I really needed all that heat over there. Solar panels are cool. It's been pumping so far in this winter sun. Uh, 150 watts, that's amazing. I think they're way, way, way more efficient than whatever my fold uh, bendable uh, rooftop uh, solar panels. But then again, those were, um, I had them for about four years and they've been scratched by branches and all kinds of stuff. So. Uh, and generally bendable are not as efficient so but anyways I'll uh, get out for another trip sometime in a month or so and uh, do all these comparisons and stuff so I shut it off it's in cooldown and now I'm gonna do some silicone sealing inside everything's been super dry it's 2.30 middle of January two hours away from Vancouver I'm actually in t-shirt like I actually took it off it's that warm like a little bit chilly, but generally I could be like this for now a few hours. And in fact, I'm gonna start gathering some wood for a campfire. Amazing, just I totally didn't get stuck. It reminds me of uh, Jones Lake, middle of April, one time where it was blizzard. I woke up, I'm like, oh, maybe I should be moving out of here. Blizzard ended, an hour later, there was sunshine, the whole snow melted. And it gotten so hot that I completely undressed, like completely, sat on the roof and got some sun tan. It was weird. Beautiful, beautiful sunset. Fire is going. And it's dinner time. 
watching Jan Sheldon continuing. So tonight it's going to be Russian pelmeni and Ukrainian pierogies. I think these are mushroom and potato and something else. I think this is probably worth about three hours of heating. I'll leave it on for tonight and I will see. Like supposedly there is uh, safety mechanisms here of all sorts. I'm not sure what's gonna happen when it's gonna run out of fuel. I guess it will shut down on its own. We'll see, but that's why this thing is away from my truck. <laughs> I have no idea what it's gonna do. I'm pretty sure it's just gonna shut off and everything's gonna be fine. Ah, but for now, yeah, cooking time and sunset. Good stuff. There's been no one here. Just gorgeous day. I can't believe this is January. It feels like uh, late October or like uh, April. Just the way I'm dressed, the, the way weather is. But I would say the five liter or uh, one and a quarter gallon uh, bucket like this, if I wasn't running it during the day to do my uh, silicone, uh, just drying up the track inside and stuff, I would say this uh, would be enough for two nights, easily, five liters. And five liters in uh, Canadian dollars cost me about 10 bucks. So it's like five bucks per night, it's, it's not bad. It's about what I would use in uh, butane canisters, right? I would burn maybe throughout the night uh, or evening chilling out, I would probably burn a couple of cans, that's probably about five bucks, roughly. So yeah, uh, it's decent. But basically what it tells me also is that I need a bigger canister to carry with me. Uh, or another small one like this. Uh, just uh, if I'm staying over like long weekend, three nights, four nights, this kind of thing. It's been nice sitting by the fire watching a movie, but it's time to go inside for some uh, tutorials, music on and stuff like this. So, just a reminder, this is to hold, to power it on, so, but if after a while, after one minute, whatever, there is a warning sign, whatever, you can just uh, shut it off. Or if you don't hear the click, 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 the pump pumping, you just hold these two buttons. Hear the sound, right? Sort of pre-pump. If it's completely new tank, you just uh, do it for about a minute or two. Uh, just on and off kind of thing like this. And then eventually, Hold the power button. Now it's going into this mode. It's gonna start slowly heating up. But let's crank down H6 mode. This is actually to lower it. We don't need it this high right right away. Ah, we'll let it do like two. I turned it on last night and it only lasted for about two or three hours. Uh, so then I had to switch to my butane stove for continuous heating uh, while I was chilling. Um, remaining like three four hours uh, in the car overall i definitely recommend this it's awesome i got to experience non-wet heating that is what you get from butane or propane kind of heating i definitely notice condensation now in the morning all that whereas previous night with this heater there is no condensation at all so this vivo 8k diesel heater a definite must-have in the arsenal, especially in a colder uh, climate or colder weather. It's it's worth a buy. So, so what I need to do now is come up with a box to store the piping and the unit itself, and then I'm good to go for the other few trips. I'm definitely gonna carry more diesel with me next time. Ciao.